Your house is killing you and you don't even know it. Sounds like a bad 80s horror movie. Could be, <laughs> but we're gonna show you a way to defend yourself against your house, or against your own house. Right, so we're gonna go over like the top 10 things inside your house that are dangerous to you, that you may not even know are dangerous to you. Welcome to Talking with Docs, I'm Dr. Brad Williams. I'm Dr. Paul Zalzal. Okay. So we're gonna go through this stuff, right? Yep. The stuff in the house that is actually doing you harm. Yes. It's not your fault, it's how could fault. you know? No. Uh, and some of these you might have heard of, some of these might surprise you. Right, so number one, is the dryer sheet. I could not be more surprised if you told me that <laughs> Jeremiah was not a bullfrog. Dryer sheets. I thought actually you were gonna go to the summer I turned pretty about the Jeremiah. There's, there's a couple oh, really? of boys involved in that oh, show. I haven't seen that show. I, neither have I, thankfully. But anyway, Jeremiah is a bullfrog. Right, and yeah. dryer sheets are bad for you. So they're bad for you because of something called volatile organic compounds. So um, formaldehyde as well as benzene releasing type substances. So those dryer sheets that make your load come out of the dryer so smelly and sweet and fresh. Soft, they make the clothes soft. Soft and stat get rid of the static right. are actually not good for you. They're actually dangerous for you and are, uh, have been associated with cancer. So another alternative is to consider those dryer balls, mm. like those wool dryer balls that can reduce some of the static, loosen up some of the clothes in there. You know when it gets all into a knot, and you're like, yeah. it's not even dry an mm. hour later. Um, and then consider putting some essential oils on their balls. On yeah. the wool balls. On the wool balls right, that go in the dryer. I had no idea. There you go. Uh, the next one is obvious, I think, to a lot of people at okay. this point, but they're still sold everywhere and still used, and we have them in our house. It's non-stick frying pans. I, yes. You are eating your frying pan if you're using a non-stick frying pan. Yeah. It's coated with a non-stick coating, much like Clark Griswold's uh, toboggan in uh, a non-nutritive varnish <laughs> substance. Yes. We can show that clip. This is a new non-caloric silicon-based kitchen lubricant. My company's been working on it. Creates a surface 500 times more slippery than any cooking oil. Ah, we're really gonna fly down the hill with this stuff. Has anyone ever used it on a sled? Not that I know of, Russ. Yeah. Um, uh, the problem is that non-stick coating doesn't always stick to the pan, and inevitably some gets off and gets into your food. And can re re release something called PFAS, or perfluoroalkyl substances, which are associated with cancer. Most of these, unfortunately, most of the things on this list yeah. have substances in them that can yes. lead to cancer. And if you are using a nonstick fry pan, for God's sakes, don't use a metal utensil on it, because that'll scrape off that nonstick fry pan. So then you're using a plastic utensil, and right. plastic utensils aren't that good for you either. Right, so, so if you're gonna use them, I'd say replace them regularly. Yes. Um, look for any chips or peels. If it is, then unfortunately it has it to go. It goes. Um, and when I realized this the most, how much I love nonstick fry pans is, have you ever used an induction cooktop? Yes, I have. Yeah, yeah, and how you can't have nonstick because of the way that the no. way that the science works. I'm sure you can break it down for us, but yeah. it's so annoying because everything sticks to the bottom of that pan. Yeah, and you're like, if I could just have a nonstick. Pan. Could someone please leave a comment about the best way to clean the nonstick pans, yes. other than using Easy Off or one of those toxic chemicals to yes. clean them off? Just give us. I know there's some like baking powder. Uh, vinegar combinations and things that work. I just don't know what they are, and I have a heck of a time cleaning the nonstick stuff. And I, so, and the key too is when you cook with those, you gotta heat them up very slowly, so you don't go crazy because mm -hmm. they get so hot so quickly. Yeah. You gotta cook them low and slow. My wife's figured this part out. Non Actually, she she told me we should do this list. She's like, there's so many bad things. Like she's always getting stuff out of her house. Yeah. Your wife's probably the same, right? Mm -hmm. You're like, no, you can't mm -hmm. use it anymore. Yeah. Like, what? Yeah. Some in the fridge, like you can't eat it anymore. Yeah. Like, what? We just got floor and walls. <laughs> That's right. Okay, so number three is, is air fresheners. So air fresheners and plug-ins that cover up the smells of, of your kids or your dog or whatever, mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, they're not good for you. They have something called um, phthalates with a P that have been linked to endocrine disruption. So more and more of the things that are not natural in our world that we consume or unintentionally ingest disrupt our endocrine system and can cause problems. Yeah, if you pass wind, just wait it out. <laughs> That's right. Wait it out. Okay. All right. The next one is, again, kind of obvious. It's the plastic food container. Sure. Right? On that theme, if that plastic is sitting next to your food for a long time, some of the plastic's going to end up in your food and it's going to end up in you. Yeah. Uh, especially if you heat up these plastic containers. Yep. I know some of them say they're microwave safe, but if you can imagine if you crank that thing up to 100 degrees, some of that plastic's going to end up in your food. 
and that's going to end up in you. And we know that these plastics contain some of the forever chemicals and things like that that are bad for you. Right, and even and BPA has become kind of a target, like public enemy number one, but these companies are very intelligent, so they modify the molecules a little bit so it's not BPA, but it's still BPA-like, mm -hmm. and it still can release the stuff that those forever chemicals that were just all full of plastic. And we made a pretty cool video about the different plastics we and did. the toxic effects of those plastics. We're like essentially Lego people, that's what we are. Yeah. Yeah. What do you mean? Like with all the plastic that's inside of it. Yes, them. right. <laughs> Click your nose off. Okay, so <laughs> number five is, is cleaning sprays. And to me, this also makes sense. You know, when you spray it, it doesn't smell quite right. And things that don't smell quite right, you're like, that's probably not good for me to be breathing that in. Whether that's like ammonia or bleach or formaldehyde containing substances, these are great at killing bacteria and viruses and parasites and fungi, and it also is good at killing you yeah. um, because they're dangerous. So A, if you have to use them, use them in a well-ventilated area, consider wearing a mask, certainly wear gloves if you're using them, but if you can find more natural uh, ways to clean things, it's better for you. I, and I do love my cleaning spots. Yeah. I love those things because they clean so well, and they have chemicals in them too that you can't even pronounce. So basically, <laughs> if you can't say it. It's kind of like food, right? If you can't say it, don't yeah. spray it. Yeah, yes. um, okay. All right. Uh, the next one is, oh, this is, a, this is a fan favorite too, is the scented candles. There's entire stores in the mall that are surround, that are just based on scented candles. And have you ever noticed that you walk past that mm -hmm. store and you're 50 feet away from the yeah. front door and you're like, whoa, what is, what is yeah, that it's smell? It's powerful. Yeah. yeah. I love those smells yeah. too, but yeah. they are. You know who else loves them? Cancer. <laughs> cancer <laughs> loves those smells. These yeah. Yeah. unfortunately cause cancer. Yeah. There's no better way to get them in your body than to heat them up to a high temperature and put them in the air where you're breathing because then they end up in, if you're smelling it, it's going in you. And even those highly refined waxes, when you heat them up to high temperatures, yeah. that releases stuff too. So not only the scent, but also the, the candle itself. So consider things like beeswax or soy. Did you know you can wax out of soy? Yes. Yeah, I like did. more natural candles. Yeah. Um, that have more natural scents. Yeah, and, and like, so some of those scents are okay, but yes. the majority of them are not. Yes. Okay, number seven for me is, is obvious, is microwave popcorn. So when you put corn kernels mm -hmm. into a paper bag mm -hmm. and line it with plastic mm -hmm. and some butter-like substance. Mm -hmm. Topping. He, <laughs> topping, and heat it up to a very high temperature. In a microwave. So, so hot that those kernels will pop inside yeah. of a bag. Mm -hmm. It's not good for you. Yeah. And, and there's been studies, if you, if you go on and, and talk to respirologists or immunologists about things that they won't eat, mm -hmm. microwave popcorn is top of most of these lists. So mm -hmm. it is easy, it's convenient, it's often affordable, but it's not good for you because of the forever chemicals that are, that are living inside Ending there. Ending up in you forever. And what's yeah. the deal with topping? If you go to the movies now and you say, I want butter on my popcorn. Do they have butter? They have butter, but oh. that you have to pay for behind the counter. Oh. But then you can go and just apply your own topping out there in the lobby area, but it's not butter. Nothing's truly for free either, so beware. Mm -hmm. Proceed okay. with caution on the topping. All right, fair enough. And sorry for this list. I, this is yeah. like, people are like, how come I this watch your videos, guys? Like, you yeah. make my life harder. You make yeah. it more difficult. Yeah. You make me sad. Yeah, the list could also be <laughs> called fun things around your house that yes. you're getting rid of. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the next one, this one's tricky because it's kind of, you, you use it because you think it's good for you. Yep. Right? You're like, you're marketed, Leo, this is good for me. Yes. I got to use this. If there's Especially, two options, yeah. I'm going to buy this one because it is antibacterial. Right. It has that little thing on the. Yeah. It's a soap. You're like, okay, it's got to be better for it. It's going to get rid of the bacteria. Yep. So not so much. So it has something called triclosan in it. To kill bacteria. Yeah. Which kills you as well. Yeah. And what they've been showing, it's also an endocrine disruptor. Yeah. And some people, or particularly infectious disease specialists, believe that antimicrobial soaps are leading to resistance because yeah. it kind of, we talked about this before, it's almost like when you spray your lawn with weeds. If any of those what weeds weed are- Weed killer. What's that? Spray your lawn with oh, weed yeah. killer. Spray your lawn with weed killer. Yeah. Any of the weeds that survive, yeah. essentially are selected for because they can beat a weed killer, yeah. and then that's what breeds resistance. And bacteria are kind of the same way. Unless you kill them all, yeah. anything that lives maybe has a gene that provides some type of protection, and then yeah. gets selected for, and then yeah. it becomes a problem. And we're coming next month. We're going to actually have our specialist on, Dr. Warren, to come back to talk yes. a little bit Infectious about microbial diseases. resistance. And if you think about trying to get rid of bacteria, the detergent effect of soap alone is what you're doing to wash away the bacteria. You're not right. killing it; you're washing it away. Right. So it's not going to become resistant to detergent. But the chemicals that you're adding to make it antibacterial, that is going to breed resistance. And you're going to 
get some of the harm from those chemicals. Yeah. Right? And that is entirely a marketing thing. I don't think it's ever been shown that an antibacterial soap has stopped one upper respiratory tract infection no. or GI tract infection in a house ever. I think you'd be confident using a regular bar of soap yeah. and the friction and the time yeah. under the water. Yeah. That's going to adequately wash, wash your hands. Okay. Your turn. Number nine. Shower curtains or shower curtain liners. That's why at Brad's house, there's no <laughs> shower curtains. So you got to make sure you close the washroom door when you have a shower. <laughs> That's right. They have something called phthalates, which are, which are endocrine disruptors and, and volatile organic compounds. And, and you kind of know this. When you open up that package and you're like, whoa, what is that smell? As Eddie Murphy said, you can smell it. <laughs> you can smell it. You can smell it. <laughs> you can smell it. It's kind of that smell that just smells wrong. And uh, these plastic compounds that are like this, you kind of know. You smell you're like, this probably isn't good for me. No. So, if you're smelling it, it's getting in you. I don't know really what the answer is, though, because if you have like a cloth shower curtain, this is going to absorb the water. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know what the answer is. Maybe open it up outside and let it kind of breathe for a little while before you hang it up. It's glass doors, I guess. Yeah. But right. I mean, if you have a shower that doesn't have the glass doors, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little tricky. So just beware. Yeah. The last one to close this godforsaken <laughs> list uh, is obvious as well. It's the herbicides and pesticides you have around your house. That's why there's a skull and bones on the label. Okay. Yeah. That should tell you that it's bad for you. And, and if you go to like Canadian Tire to try to get Roundup, yeah. so, so things like glyphosate and 2,4-D that essentially nuke everything, mm -hmm. um, it's actually behind like a locked thing yeah. where you got to have the guy come out or the girl yeah. come out and unlock it and say, are you yeah. sure you want this? Yeah. Like, yeah. Put it in a brown bag, don't tell anyone, sneak out the back door. Yeah. Yeah. So, so these are, are dangerous, directly linked to cancer of both you and your pets, yeah. unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, so there are more natural ways. I'd say the, the iron-based sprays seem to be yes. more common. I don't know if there's any long-term data on dangers, but it makes sense. We remove iron all the time, so that's probably not a big deal, iron mm -hmm. toxicity. Mm -hmm. um, pick I, the weeds out. Yeah. One by you, one. You could pick them. There are um, little devices where you can burn them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, actually, I have a little device that has almost like a little steel wool roller that it kind of buzzes them. Really? Yeah, like between, you know when you have your pound yeah. stone and yeah. weeds grow up? And yeah. They, yeah, yeah. And then the other thing you can use actually is a mixture of detergent and vinegar and, and borax. Ooh, yeah. look at you. I thought it was selective, but it's not. That'll kill anything. Yeah, mm. yeah, it does. I didn't know that, so I've got some patches on my lawn that look a little bit weird, but, um, <laughs> but it's, but it's more natural. What? Or just enjoy the weeds. Yeah. That's the other option. So there's a list of 10 things around your house. Go home today, get rid of all those things, and you will live forever. Probably so, not. Okay. But what I'd say is you might live a little bit longer, yeah. a little bit healthier. You can be confident that you're protecting yourself yeah. and the loved ones in your home, even your pets, a little more um, aggressively. And if you can't get rid of this stuff, just reduce its use if you can. You know, if you get rid of a, get rid of a few things on this list, you're doing yourself a favor. Well, even like the plastic, we're going to do a video about the different bottles. You know, it's, we keep yeah. going back. Is it glass bottle? Is it metal bottle? Is it plastic, plastic bottle? bottle? So it's not knows. so straightforward. It's not so straightforward. But if you like this video, please like it. Subscribe to our channel. Leave a comment about what you think about any of this stuff. And if you, if you have little hacks to say, I used to use this, but now I use this because I was worried about that same thing. Please yeah. share it. It helps all our viewers. Or if now you live in a cabin in the woods, remember. Just make sure you don't stay in the woods. <laughs> that could be bad for you. <laughs> remember, you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time.